Finally, the night has passed, and I can bring us back in to another episode of Terra Tech. <laughs> we're here, we're back in the world, and I am really excited for this one today, because we are going to be moving out and building a new base. Now, we've done base building before, this time I have a much different approach and concept in mind, which I can't wait to get to showing you, but we've got a job to do first of all. And I've been thinking about this, we need to dismantle the base that we have here, and I think what I want to do is actually sell a lot of this stuff rather than transport it. Now we've got some valuable things here, like uh, the delivery cannons, they're really expensive, so we want to hold on to those. But my plan is to basically head over there with just um, a single vehicle with all of the base attached to it, and maybe we'll drive like a cab back on its own and pick up some of the other vehicles we've created. Um, but for the rest of it, it's all going to get dismantled and scrapped to turn into money. So if you have a look up the top here, we've almost got 50,000. Been doing a lot of harvesting with the harvester <laughs> and uh, making ourselves some money because we're going to need lots of that in the new base. And I've been going around and just having fun fighting some different techs. So I found these little armor plating bits. I've also found the EXP wheel and gyroscope. I think we might have found those already. Uh, but yeah, just more things that have been unlocked. So there is one thing that I want to do at the beginning of this episode, and that is a little bit of an experiment, one that I've probably done before and forgotten. You know me. Uh, we need two of the same item, and I actually am not very prepared here because I don't have <laughs> two of the same item of a particular type ready to do this. Let's say we just go with a battery for now. We'll take a couple of these batteries, chuck them over here. So I'm going to be dragging and dropping a lot of items onto this little bit right here so that they can be sold. This thing has four inputs. Um, so if we sell one of these directly as opposed to putting it in a scrapper, I want to know the difference in price because otherwise I'm going to be scrapping stuff too, right? So we get 98 for that. This thing's going to give us two of these and actually we might as well drop it directly into there. So can I do a little bit of math on camera here? We've got 18. Oh, that's interesting because this one, are you going to go on there? It's got to be worth like 80 or something. So 78 that means that scrapping it isn't the best thing to do in that case I'm going to try that out with a few other blocks and I'll probably report back if I find any difference but otherwise there's not too much to talk about we're now going to dismantle this thing and uh, and head out to a new area so the first thing that I've learned is that there's a reason not to go away from this thing over here which I thought that there wasn't because we had the little delivery cannon over here this thing doesn't like these sorts of items. I guess maybe it only likes the smallest ones, but it means that we can't scrap everything. I don't know what the rule here might be. It could be if it's a one block item, it's fine. Uh, what about a two block item like this? Are you okay to sell that? It looks like it is. Actually, we can sell those. I don't need them. <laughs> uh, when it comes to these big ones right here, it doesn't like it. It doesn't want to know. And this one off in the distance doesn't mind it at all. So. Kind of the, one of the reasons I wanted to move away from this area is because I thought we'd be independent of uh, using this over here. But I guess it means maybe we just take the occasional trip back over here and sell some of these items. Now, considering the size and what they sell for, they're probably worth doing as well. So if ever we find um, some bigger items, we, we collect them from a tech that we've destroyed and you know we bring them back over here. They're probably worth the trip and worth the money that we get from it. <laughs> And yeah, that was literally the first thing that I tried to sell there, so we're off to a great start. <laughs> okay, I don't want to lose track of what I've tested here. I've done the healing bubble, the shield, the coil laser, or is it the stud? It's the coil laser. Just about managed to read that back there. And I also just done the payload terminal as well. And so when you scrap an item directly, you actually get the cost of it back. So it's always going to be a lot better than scrapping it, because everything that I've scrapped and turned into... Um, other materials has uh, worked out being less. So that means that when you bring home lots of uh, materials and you want to sell them like this, if you could automate the crafting process, then you could make a lot more money by crafting the things that are worth the most. I mean, you could even calculate, you know, which items are the best to craft based on their ingredients to make the most money. So that's a project we're going to be doing in the future for sure. I've also heard that there's item filters for these as well, which means we could filter out all of the different materials we bring in and possibly automatically craft them, which I think is possible with these things as they connect to conveyors. So I'm excited for that. And uh, if anything changes, of course, I'll let you know. But otherwise, we're now just dismantling all of the base. I did not realize this thing could also sell other types of blocks. Actually, I did realize that because I've done it with the venture level. I guess it never really like set in that that means we can sell absolutely anything. So I've been thinking if we can pretty much 
um, you know, sell everything at the price we buy it at. What's the point in transporting everything? You know, just drop off everything into this thing and buy it all when we get to our new location. So I started building this monstrosity, and you know, the scrap is important, but it costs the same price as it does to sell it. So <laughs> we may as well just sell it here and rebuild it when we get over there. Although I'm probably going to keep this thing together now. Uh, but I picked up a few of these things. I was going to bring them with me, but we can sell them. And of course, now that we've unlocked them, we can buy them as well. So there's no real need to like hold on to these things unless you actually need them now. So I like that. That works really well. Makes things a lot easier. So we're just going to sell you know, as much as we can and uh, and then we'll move on. I should have thought ahead here and brought a payload terminal with me so we could have brought a few blocks. But uh, I put some wheels on this thing and it totally works. <laughs> Look at that. It levels itself out. It can spin around and it goes so much faster than the cab on its own. I was thinking... Right, are we going to drive all the way back to our other techs at this kind of speed? No way, that's not going to work. And uh, this looks like it's going to do just fine. I imagine we're going to run into some difficulty <laughs> perhaps going in the direction we want to. Yeah, as soon as I turn, I've got a feeling this is going to become awkward. So I want to go to the left. Actually, now that we've got speed, that is, that is really fast. I like that a lot. Okay, well, hopefully I'm heading to the right marker on the map. And hopefully I don't accidentally run into any baddies as well. So yeah, <laughs> the plan is to go back and get bring one of the other techs back over here. So here it is, the new base concept. I know I haven't built too much so far, but I was thinking that this is pretty easy to work with, having a frame like this, right? It's nice, big and wide, you can drive in and out. I mean, having this rail go across the top here, I know it's not a rail, it's a bunch of blocks, but... Having it go across the top like that, there's a quite a nice range for it to reach to the batteries. I'm actually really surprised at how far that reaches. So just parking in here is going to be ever so easy. Now this is probably actually a small bay in comparison to some of the techs we're going to build in the future. Um, so we can obviously make these bigger as well. But my idea is that um, with a few of these, we've got these really nice driving bays to get charged. And then around here we can build a perimeter, which this time I want to experiment with putting down... Um, so rotating anchors like this thing over here, maybe attaching blocks to it and then putting some weapons on them, which is what the game wants you to do. And last time what we did is we sort of looked at that and I said no because it moves around and I want fixed walls. And then I realized, you know, that means you've got something here. You don't need to put um, an AI on it or a, a cab or anything like that. And you can put weapons on it and it will automatically shoot. So I'm thinking what we'll do is build like a, a grid of these things around the outside and put some weapons on them and then in the central areas we'll have drive through bits like this um, and we can kind of push this one out of the way as well <laughs> and get this one charged up now so I like this the one thing I don't like about it though is that we have all of these solar generators on it what I'd like to do is have batteries that have loads of stuff in reserve for us to use and I was thinking what we could do is create some sort of like battery bay where we have loads of batteries together and then we link them to this and there's a whole load of other stuff I could say about it I think I'm just gonna build it as an experiment and then show you what exactly it is I mean okay so this will make much more sense and at the moment I park myself over here so you can see we can get a recharge from over here and we've also got a battery on this thing as well just hidden down here at the moment which means it's get a charge from this thing I really wish we had a cab for that <laughs> I'm gonna have to put cabs on all these things aren't I Makes it so much easier. I was thinking earlier, actually, it'd be really nice if in this game you could uh, drop the focus on a tech and just sort of free control the camera and move around. That would be really cool. Uh, but you always got to focus on something. And look at this. We've got an extra cab right here. So the idea is, is that we put our bays like this and then we have like a battery station in the middle. Now what I'm going to do is build our next bay over on this side because this thing will want to get bigger in the future when we unlock the bigger batteries and we'll probably build other stuff over on this side. Now what I want this thing to do is power the entire base and eventually you know we'll cover it with shields and stuff like that. Um, but you can see here we've got some of these types of shields. When I say shields I mean the armor plating. Um, we've got some of the power base shields here right now. They're a battery and it also got loads of solar here so it charges up during the day and this is basically our central storage of power and then I want to see what we can do with passing the current from this around the base like so. So what we might then do is for the next bay is basically build the exact same thing you see here and then have an extra charger on the side of it so it can charge the next battery along. And I think that way we'll be able to like have the currency, uh, currency, <laughs> that's not the word, the current. 
yeah, the current sort of flow through different parts of the base using batteries and uh, receivers. And of course, you don't have to do it that way at all, but I thought it'd be fun to give it a try. Um, so that's kind of the plan. <laughs> so now I want to find out if we can, like, you know, link this thing through twice, which it would appear you could because, you know, we're taking a charge on the battery here. We could then have a receiver on this side charging a battery over there. So I'll go ahead and I'll build another one of these bays just around this position. There we go, evidence that the uh, concept will work. We have our second bay in place and the currency, oh, I'm going to say that so often, the current is being transferred across. It's kind of unnecessary that it does that. In fact, these could probably just be connected together as one structure, but I just want to mess around with it and do things differently. So I really love this. We can park our techs and then we can send them out again, which is great. I think defense is going to be the one thing um, that undoes us at the moment. Like someone comes along and attacks and it all gets destroyed. Not good. We do need some defensive uh, thingies in place. But what I really want to do right now is start working on some of the other stuff like all of the processing plants and things like that that we could potentially put in the area. This is so awesome. I love it. And look at that. The batteries are almost down to 4 out of 5 and it's almost day as well. And by the way, playing and recording in here at night time is a little bit better because it's all sort of lighter. It doesn't get quite as dark and gloomy which is cool. Um, where is the fixed anchor I had over there? It's gone. <laughs> it's now here. And uh, and that block has gone. Yeah, so I'm going to buy a bunch of these and just put some blocks and weapons on them and see how that does. Also, when you're buying things in the menu, it's kind of nice if you find a combination where you can uh, buy two things at the same time. Like a moment ago, I was buying uh, batteries and shields. Just made things a little bit quicker. I don't know. I'm going on now, aren't I? <laughs> right, let's buy these things and uh, plop down some more anchors. So how's that looking? I'm really annoyed that the middle one gets charged by that one up there. <laughs> And uh, initially I kind of pictured it with just the one in the middle charging all three, but that doesn't work of course. Um, so we're going to move this further forward and you can see how it's made. You have to press like rotate so many times. There we go. <laughs> that wasn't too many times. But the whole rotational thing is kind of annoying. I think we discussed that before. It goes through every single possible rotation and that includes when the texture's flipped. So it's in the same position. It's just kind of silly. So what's going to happen now? Ha, excellent. Right, that's the way I want it to work. So now if anything comes near here, we've got like these little pound ca cannon terminals to fire at them. I doubt it's really going to be that effective, but what I like is that they're all charged and they've all got shields. So if we do get attacked and the shields come into use, then it's going to start draining from our master battery over here as it, you know, the, the current passes through all of the charges. So then it'll be able to hopefully um, keep the shields running for as long as possible, which I really, really like. So this could end up being effective. We would need like a massive perimeter of them. But either way, that is a really good start to this base. And I'm really enjoying how this is coming together. Uh, but I think now we need to move on to getting some sort of harvesting set up or something, you know, in place for uh, getting our materials in here and making some, some more money. Because already we're down to 60,000. So we've spent about 20,000 on this so far. And I want to build, you know, many more things than just this. Okay, we will move on to that shortly. Uh, one thing I want to show you though is that I've made this. This could be a way for us to extend the perimeter just passing the signal on. It's definitely expensive. One problem with it though is when I come near it starts to uh, charge me instead of the next one in the chain. But otherwise the concept seems to be a pretty solid. <laughs> I really do like this setup. Ever so cool. And there is something else that I started thinking about. Now when we buy things from the payload terminal they just drop down in a circle and after you brought so many things it stops delivering them because they're isn't enough space so I thought wouldn't it be cool if we could automate picking those up now the one thing that automatically picks up the GSO blocks is locked at the moment and I've got a feeling this ain't right because we've got a grade 3 license and if we go down here you can see um, that most of the stuff is unlocked if we go a little bit further the GSO receiver this is the big one the one that will pick the GSO blocks and other blocks off the ground that's locked I'm kind of annoyed by that I'm literally thinking yep that's a bug so is this thing right here Maybe what I want to do is find out if there's cheat codes for this game or a way that you can unlock stuff. And obviously I wouldn't go for the level 4 stuff, but since we've got our GSO level 3 license, it feels a bit annoying that they've somehow locked, because initially they were they were unlocked, and I guess I updated the game and something broke. Anyway, my idea is that with a GSO receiver, we can put them around the payload terminal and then transport the items down some conveyors into silos. So when we buy stuff, we can move them closer to where 
we're working and uh, we can also then buy lots and lots of things and have them all stored up in a silo which sounds fantastic but uh, as of right now what I'm going to do is actually head all the way back and where is that extra cab that I have? I'm going to attach some wheels to it and I'm going to go grab our harvester. We're going to bring that back over here and start working on um, a setup like I, like I talked about a moment ago. We're back and I wandered into a tech thinking it was my own and now we're under attack. Got an intruder. I was hoping I could lure it over to the other side. So this thing's fully charged up which means um, it shouldn't do too much damage to us. Wow, it just like took out... <laughs> that thing which was anchored and oh my god explosions everywhere I'm not sure if we can measure the damage entirely straight away okay it seems to be over those two weapons were already missing so we got some more wheels we'll hold on to those that's another thing we need to do we need to come up with a decent way of storing items and where are you I'd like to put a cab back on our battery there's the cab but what I want to do right now is just see if it did any damage to this because this thing isn't shielded yet and I could have brought um, the stuff to shield it and by that I mean armor plated. <laughs> I'll always get those the wrong way around so uh, what I want to do is check if it took any damage and if we do that we should see something flash okay so it didn't we are being invaded and it's right in the middle of our base <laughs> or at least it's nearby <clears throat> yeah this is one of the problems of being out here in the desert so hopefully I'm always kind of alert to it so to speak and uh, right here is the spot. We've still got a little warning for over there. Not sure what that is for exactly. But here comes the invasion. We're fully charged. We've got an extra <laughs> battery on top of us. And this thing... Ah, it's got a shield. So we want to sit back here and drain its battery by the looks of it. It's got a lot of weapons on the top of it. And it starts firing back. Let's get a little closer because all those shots are going over us. And we did it. And we get some new blocks from this by the looks of it. So, a new big wheel type. That's awesome. That's going to be... Actually, we might be able to upgrade this one. Yeah, that's going to be nice, but uh, we might be able to use it on the one we've got right here. Maybe it goes a little bit faster. So I'll hold on to those four. we got a shield and a bubble. You know, since we're near the base, we might as well keep those. But otherwise, I don't think there's anything too much here of use. What is that? What are you? Are you... Oh, it's just a gun. From the angle I was looking at it, it looked kind of different. I think there's some sort of lights. Let's chuck them on top so they're unlocked. Yep, they look like lights. I am not sure what I think of these big wheels. You can kind of go relatively fast, but when you're stationary like this, turning is really slow and accelerating is pretty naff as well. <laughs> those boosters on the side, they make a big difference. I kind of feel like I want more of those, and maybe what we should do is expand this thing upwards, have some of them on the top here, but uh, those big wheels aren't going to do it. That's for a much bigger tech, and I think maybe if these were spaced out a little bit, it might be a little bit better. Can we do that easy enough? It looks like, yeah, we can sort of move the front one forward a little bit if we rotate it. And does that make any difference at all? Hmm, straight away actually. Turning is now quite sharp, isn't it? With a little bit of acceleration. Maybe that's what we need to do. Just space out the wheels a bit more and then it might be good. Is it me or has this thing just lost all of its turning power now? I spaced the wheels out again and it feels like we've taken a step back. Uh, let's plop it back on and move it forward so now it's like it was in the position it was before oh yeah you definitely do just get a little bit more steer when it's set up like that uh, it also means that our weapons are all higher up hey look there's something right here let's go <laughs> what is that that is a strange looking tech it kind of looks like a little animal doesn't it is the way it's been put together so our weapons actually being a little bit higher seem to be quite effective there Okay, I redesigned this a little bit. You can see we've got extra weapons on top. I've shuffled the batteries and other things around and now we've got an extra free fuel tanks, which is really cool. And we've got three of these things on either side. They make a huge difference to turning. You can really turn very well with those. And I think it probably needs to have more because then we could turn a lot more effectively. But I've been playing around with this thing. It is really good setup. And uh, we did come back over here with the intention of setting something up for the harvester. So I'm going to end this video with a quick experiment to see if something works. So we want a way to unload all of these goods, but we want to do it quickly into a buffer. So if we have a load of these set up parallel to one another, they're going to move like that. And look at that when they go over to the back row. I must have got the distance there perfect. Um, they then get pulled over into this conveyor belt. So that way we can create a buffer for unloading this really quickly and then have a conveyor belt to send it into whatever setup we have, which is what we're going to build 
in the next episode. So that's going to be it for this one. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, please do leave a like on the video. It's always appreciated. And I'll catch you in the next episode. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.